Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Oh, what a great day this is. Welcome into Culture Keys. Glad to have you today. And it's exciting for us here in the studio because this is our 100th episode of Culture Keys. And so we're excited. First of all, I'm excited. I stuck I stuck to building a wall till I got it all the way to 100. And listen, I, I'd like to know, we have a lot of listeners from some neat places. I'd like to know where you're listening from today, how you caught the podcast. And if you'll go to pastor at culturekeys.net, just drop me a little note, pastor at culturekeys.net. Let me know um, where you're listening from. Let me know how the podcast has touched your life. And I pray that uh, we just keep on rolling for yet another hundred episodes. I'm excited to share with you again today. And we've been talking for several weeks about something that's been really heavy on my heart. I've been emotional in the studio. It's been a little different kind of a series uh, for us, but we've been talking about wall building leadership. My heart is burdened. I am gifted uh, to are blessed to get to travel across the country and preach the gospel, uh, to be in uh, multiple, multiple, multiple churches a year, to be in different settings. And I just want to say this, we've never needed wall building leadership more than we need it right now. Culturally, generationally, uh, we have got to see God raise up some Nehemiahs, some wall building leaders. <clears throat> and I've gone through the first three chapters of the book of Nehemiah, just pointing out a few of the principles and the things within those chapters that I feel really touch my heart and are attributes or characteristics that are so necessary in the season that you and I are leading in. Leadership is challenging in every generation, but I believe in ours, it is especially so. The pushback, the opposition against real spiritual leadership is at an all-time high. And uh, it's important in this season that that God calls some generational Nehemiahs, called to the kingdom for such a time as this, equipped, anointed, and gifted uh, to lead and to rebuild walls in the season that we're in. And I want to focus today's Culture Keys uh, time on Nehemiah chapter 4. <clears throat> and it's an interesting chapter because this is the chapter that introduces the trials and tribulations and difficulties of wall building leadership. And let me say this to all of those that are currently leading and those potential leaders that are listening. If you don't want to be ridiculed, if you don't want to be spoken ill of, if you don't want to be put under pressure, if you don't like opposition, if you don't want to be tempted to quit, wall building leadership is not for you. Because you're going to have to be get comfortable with sp folks speaking out against what God has called you to do. You're going to have to get comfortable with a culture that is in op absolute opposition to the things of God, to the righteousness of God, to the truth that is in God's word. So much easier to go with the flow. So much easier to just let it slide the season and the times that you and I are living in. If you're going to really build walls for God and in response to your heartbreak and into the assignment God has placed over your life, you're going to have to get uh, comfortable with the realities of leadership. And I want to, I want to mention some of those today. Some of the things you need to get ready for as a wall building leader, things you need to settle in your heart <clears throat> that are not going to get you off of your wall or cause you to come down from the assignment that God has called you to. And the first is this, if you have a pen, write this down. As a wall building leader, you'll get very little of the credit and all the blame. You'll get very little of the credit and all the blame. If you need credit and are allergic to blame, leadership will forever be difficult for you. 
<laughs> if you need credit, like you need somebody to pump up your little uh, hiney and, and powder you every time you pick up a piece of trash off the floor, honey, you're, you, this is going to be a long road for you because real wall building leaders get all the credit, most of it at least, are very little of the credit and all the blame. Whatever credit there is, let me encourage you, has to be given to God and the other members of your team. And whatever blame there is, is always going to center on you because you are the leader. And just let me whisper this in your ear. You, as the leader, responding to your heartbreak and the call of God, you are able to carry it. I'd like you to just think through, right, your character. I have some people that are a part of my ministry, even a part of my leadership team, that, boy, they, they need credit. They need someone to notice they did something good. And I want to caution you on needing people to recognize your actions. Man, you're working. Even if you work in a full-time job in ministry, you're not working for your pastor. You are working for God. You're on his payroll. And he recognizes every, everything you lay down, everything you give up. He recognizes. And no matter what um, you walk through, no matter the difficult season, when good things happen in your life and ministry, man, point it back to God. But it's important that we understand that in leadership, we're going to get the blame and, and not a lot of the credit. Secondly, even though you're just another member of the team, you're going to be the target of the adversary. The one up front always is a target. And if you're called to be up front, you need to know you're going to be a target. In Nehemiah chapter 4, the enemy heard that the wall was being rebuilt and immediately began to resist. And the enemy doesn't care anything about us as long as we're willing to settle for a broken life, a broken marriage, a broken church, a broken culture. No problem. Long as you don't mind it broken, you're going to be left alone. But the minute you respond to your heartbreak and the call of God and begin to rebuild what's been broken, all hell is going to be breaking loose in your life, in your family, in your ministry. There are a couple of things I want to encourage you to. The first is this. We should expect the attack. Man, we should know it's coming. Anytime you're on assignment, anytime you're responding to the call of God, the call of God sends men into enemy-held territory. And in enemy-held territory, you should expect opposition. You should expect the attack. You should expect for the enemy to come against what God has called you to do. I think it's funny often when we're surprised when the devil acts like the devil Man, that's what he does. We ought to expect it. We ought to be prepared for it. I always feel like the things we're not prepared for are the ones that have the ability to upset, overturn, cause us to come down from the wall of the assignment God has sent us to accomplish. Expect the attack. Secondly, focus on the vision. Focus on the vision. The enemy's attacks are meant as a distraction. And if he can distract us, he has accomplished what's in his heart to do. And some of you are leading distracted right now. And it's really hurting the fruit that God wants to send to your life, through your life and ministry. You're leading distracted. You're responding to the voices of negativity. You're responding to the pressure. You're responding uh, to the people that have something to say about what God has called you to do. Expect the attack, but focus on the vision. Man, just keep building the wall. I love that about Nehemiah. He said, uh-huh, I hear you. But the response was, I'm not coming down from what God's called me to do because I'm focused on the vision. And then lastly, stay at it till you're done. 
Stay at it till you're done. Don't stop short of what God's called you to do. Run through the tape. I remember um, running track as a kid. And uh, one of the things that our track coach used to always say 100 times over and over again was to run through the tape. I want to encourage you today, wherever you're listening, whatever's happening in your life, whatever opposition that you are experiencing, I want to encourage you, run through the tape. Stay at it until it's finished. Don't stop short of what God's called you to do. Expect the attack. Focus on the vision. Stay at it until you're finished. And today, I, I just feel the anointing in the studio. I want to pray for those of you that are in the middle of serious attacks. Maybe you're in the middle of serious distractions. The enemy has heard that you're building a wall and he's come to disrupt and distract. Father, I ask today for those that are leading, for those that are wall building, or for those that today feel inspired to take up the responsibility and answer the call that you have over their life. Father, I pray strength today. I pray for those leaders that are leading distracted, that you would clear up the distractions, that you would put blinders on our hearts and lives, that we might pursue you with everything that we are so that we can accomplish what you've called us to do. We love you today. We're so thankful to be the sheep of your pasture. We're so thankful to be up under your protection and covering. Give us divine direction. Speak leadership to our hearts and speak strength to our minds that we may endure in the season ahead. And we give you praise for it in Christ's name. I love each of you. Can't wait to see you right back here next week on Culture Keys. 